Namaste and welcome to the sixth episode of COVID case series by Apollo Experts. Today we have Dr. Arit Merotra, um, Senior Consultant in Endocrinology Apollo Hospitals. He has completed his DM and DNB in Endocrinology from SGPGI Lucknow. Um, he has about 25 years of experience in endocrinology and he's been practicing at Apollo Hospitals Jubilee Hill since 1996. Uh, he specializes in uh, treatment for diabetes mellitus, type 1, type 2, endocrine disorders and metabolic bone diseases. Today, he's going to talk to us about managing NCDs during COVID-19 with a special focus on diabetes. Over to you, Dr. Marotra. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the uh, we, it's a difficult time for uh, everybody and especially the diabetic patients. The most common question that basically we come across when you see patients, one of the first questions I ask is, if the diabetic patient is more likely to get the COVID infection or not. Now, if you look at the data coming from either China or Italy or US or UK, the one thing is really clear, Kiri, if you're a diabetic, you are not more prone to get more infection. Your chance of getting an infection is basically equivalent to like any other normal population or normal person in the human population. If you look at the, the population point of view, but if you look at the patient, number of patients sitting in the uh, ICU or the admitted in the ICU or the critical care, there you may find more number of patients with uh, diabetes. That means key, if you are diabetic and if you get the infection, you are more likely to have a more aggressive disorder of COVID rather than a simple benign disorder of COVID. Now, as I said, that case, the, the, the diabetes are basically not one kind of diabetes. We have type 1 who are basically maybe children. They may have a different kind of course. Then we have type 1 diabetes who have become adults, basically maybe at the 40, 50. They may have comorbid conditions like hypertension and nephropathy or cardiovascular disease. That is one spectrum. Then we have the type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes, again, they are the wide spectrum. They could be young. They could be elderly. They could have comorbid conditions. Or they could have... The obesity is a very, very important factor. How the disease will progress in the patient of diabetes, the blood pressure and the, the weight plays a very, very important part. Then comes the question about the, uh, the what are the chances of key, what are the, what are the importance of the control in the control of COVID situation. Now, if you look at the, uh, the data which is coming from different sources, it's a little bit the more kind of confusion is there in that class. Uh, there's some data that says that in case you have a poor control of diabetes at the admission time, you are much more likely to progress, uh, have a control disorder, much more pulmonary involvement, much of other complications over COVID. In case you had a better control of diabetes before you got the infection, you may have a kind of much more reasonable progression of the disease. That is one that's come out on the various studies that come out. Then comes the question about can COVID as such cause diabetes or not? Again, a very common question which we have seen the normal practice of coming across. Now, if you look at the COVID disease as such, we know that there's a basically a situation of stress. And we know that we some call it stress in the application. Yeah. That is one situation. Second, when the patients are getting on the steroids, follow yeah, withdrawal or like a drawn, if in the reasonable dose, it's fine, but sometimes they are you with a high dose of steroid infused. Even those patients may go into a state of hypertension. Apart from this situation, there's one category which we are looking at is can COVID is still called de novo diabetes? We know that these beta cells do express ACE2 receptor. We know that the virus enters this uh, body through the ACE2 receptor. It may happen that sometimes this COVID virus may enter the beta cells and uh, infect them and cause destruction of the beta cell, which may go to a very rapid onset of hyperglycemia and it could be. It is not a very commonly seen scenario, but one scenario has been which has been discussed in the scientific circulation is one of this. He can COVID infection cause diabetes per se, it can cause. If you look at the other side point of view, he, he, it can even cause hypoglycemia. The 10% of patients admitted in the Chinese hospital, they develop hypoglycemia. Your requirement of medicine may come down. So you have to look at both the ways. So close monitoring is very, very important in a patient with a COVID infection. Then comes the question that type 1 and type 2 will behave in a similar way or not. Now we know that as the type 1 diabetes will basically are uh, having no residual beta cell secretion, they are dependent upon the insulin from outside. And if you look at the presentation factors of COVID in the type 1, one of the first uh, factors, the symptom was high sugar. So whenever you are seeing a patient seeing the sugar going higher in type 1 diabetes, always we look for the other associated symptoms and signs of the COVID as they are. Because the, the, uh, when we take insulin, uh, the, we basically depend upon the, what the carb intake is and what the treatment goes on. 
Now, if it has been exposed to virus, your body is facing stress, the body is making stress hormones. That means the requirement of insulin will be going up. So that could be one of the first time care if you're not going up, you may have developed an infection. It's not that the every type of diabetes or sugar are going up through so COVID. That is one of the one of the areas not there. But you can be at the lookout in case my sugar is going up, I should get tested. Now, as I said, the type 1 type 2 will behave differently. Type 2 diabetes basically have more associated hypertension, they have more associated obesity, but that is basically not a very good uh, background scenario for a COVID patient. In case you're obese and if you're uncontrolled and you're hypertensive, so you should be very careful in monitoring your uh, COVID infection. Then question comes, key, how should a COVID uh, patient, the, the diabetic patient, prevent himself from getting the infection? The uh, basic guideline is the same. One guideline basically is the clear things you should maintain social distancing, keep sanitizing your hand, and always wear a mask when you're at home. Now they have recently changed. In case you have a member in the house who's infected, you should wear the mask in the house as well. In case you are not there, honestly, very, very sure, you know, all the members of the house are negative. So wear the mask, wash your hands, and be uh, be at the house. Only when you have to go out for an urgent purpose, then go out. Even then you should mention social distancing. Then comes the important precaution is protect patient. Try to get them under control. Look at your baseline even see what the even sees are, what medicine I'm using, are the, the, the reading what I'm keeping in the home is correct or not, and whether I should do, need to adjust the dose or not. Look at your blood pressure. And maybe in case you're at home or maybe doing exercise also, try to cut on your weight a little bit. I would not say to go, go for a crash weight loss diet, but maybe if you're looking at a weight loss of half kg to one kg in a month, that will basically improve your metabolic control as per diabetic patient. The uh, another complication which is very commonly seen in type 1 diabetes is the DKA, which has again come up with diabetic key as well. Now, we know that basically, the, if you look at the glucose metabolism in the body, it depends upon two things. One side, we have the insulin. One side, we have the stress hormones of the one and the steroids. In case your insulin supply is not adequate, for the stress part, your insulin supply is less, the sugar will go up. Coupled with the rise in the dose of steroids or with the rise of the stress hormone, with the disbalance, and the body will change the metabolic fuel from glucose ketone fat, and but it generates fat in the ketone in the body. So these ketones can form acid and which can alter the basic pH uh, balance and sometimes lead to diabetic ketone. Now in DKA patient, the type of diabetic patient, I think is that the glycemic control will not be so adequate. And as you depend upon the insulin from outside, and if you don't titrate your dose for the particular amount of stress or the steroids, you may end up more in The per se COVID infection going to DKA, as I said, the possibility is there, but that is not a very common issue. So uh, get your house, uh, get your medications in order, get your control in order, and start monitoring at home. In case you have been unlucky to get the COVID infection, what should we do? A very common, uh, again, a very common question practice. So basically, in case you've got infection, don't panic. First thing is contact your doctor who will be giving your COVID for the COVID infection. See what medication has been prescribed to you, what medication you've taken for diabetes, whether an infection is there or not, and all the start checking at home. Start checking your blood sugar in the home. Keep, keep a blood sugar instrument, glucometer, keep a BP instrument, and keep an oximeter in the home to check your sugar, blood pressure, and uh, saturation. Do a six minute watt test to see whether the saturation is dipping or not. And look at your symptoms of fever and cough. Again, the sugars have to be monitored very closely. As I said, one of the first signs of the infection or worsening could be the high sugar, which has to be addressed. The certain medication, uh, we normally, the patient is at home and uh, well saturation, well maintained. Normally, we don't change the medication for diabetes. We normally add something to it to get the, keep the sugar under control. But in case you find the saturations are coming down, certain medication medication has to be changed. Like a urine inhibitor or metformin may have to be withdrawn. SUs may have to be withdrawn and we may have to add the insulin medication. So be in touch with your uh, endocrinologist or a diabetes doctor who's been treating you. Look at your physician who's been treating the COVID infection. Water yourself. And then I think you should have a hopeful, well, clear, simple. Thank you, Dr. Manota. So that was very informative. Um, you know, what are the types of diabetes and the whole spectrum of, uh, you know, how it, how it, you know, affects the body and, you know, how the comorbidities take 
um, you know, affecting to how the patient is doing. Um, so we do have a few questions. Some of them may be repetitive of what you've already spoken, but we'll ask in a question and answer form so that, um, you know, they can understand, the general public can understand it a little better. So the first question, you already addressed it. Does COVID-19 cause diabetes? COVID-19, in a sense, is not a very common cause for diabetes, but it can cause. If you look at the, even if the other viral infections are known to cause diabetes at some time, they, they, they destroy the beta cells, and which will trigger off the autoimmunity and which can cause a decay. But that's not a very common scenario, but it can happen. We see patients with normal HbA1c and uh, very high sugar, not unsteroid, they generate ketones, and sometimes they go to the of very rapid progression of so just because I am a diabetic, am I at a higher risk of acquiring COVID-19? No, as I said very clearly, the data is very clear. In case you are diabetic, your risk of getting an infection is as equal to any other normal person. You should maintain the same precaution what other person is taking. That should be fine. Okay. So now if I am diabetic, so we, you did talk about how it affects the whole metabolism. Um, so am I at a higher risk of severe complications coming from COVID-19? Yes. The, if you look at the number of patients in the ICU, you'll find the difference there. The number of, of percentage population in the diabetes has been non-admitted or admitted. So patients under or having diabetes are more prone to get admitted in the ICU. They can develop more progression of disease. But again, as I said, the diabetes is a very spectrum of disease. You may have a patient who is young and has uh, BMI is quite less than 24, has no comorbidities, has a good A1C control, is on simple medication and lifestyle. He would, as they basically may do like any other normal person. And at the first time, we have an elderly patient who weight is more than the BMI is more than 30, is hypertensive, has a shared nephropathy, has a shared cardiac disorder, and A1C is not under control. He may have a much more strong A1C. So that basically makes a difference. But being a diabetic, you are at more of risk of getting complications, order more closely, and uh, be, when, be careful when you get the COVID infection. Um, so what should the diabetic patients do if they think they're developing the symptoms of COVID-19? Not very severe, but the general regular symptoms like fever, cold, cough. In case you are having a doubtful symptom, you should get tested. That's very important. Confirm that you have the fever and cough. Sometimes there could be any other infection which is putting the fever and cough except when the COVID. So the approach will be a little different. So get tested and confirm that we have COVID infection or not. Look at your comorbidity, the, the family issue or the, the contact history, and then take a test. But in case you have got a symptom, first, as I said, you start checking your sugar. Look at your medication, what you have been using, what your saturation are. In case you don't have a COVID infection, you can come to the regular hospital, regular emergency, and you will manage accordingly. A simple non-diabetic patient can also get the, the diabetic patient, a simple pneumonia also. That has to manage accordingly. But in case you are COVID positive, you have to be very careful about your uh, saturation, blood pressure, blood sugar, monitor very carefully. And then you look at how to treat you. The treatment plan will remain the same. And if they're adding steroids for you, you have to be very, very careful. So if I'm a diabetic patient, what are my red flags? When should I immediately seek medical help? The, the, if you look at the warning signs, uh, would be one is their uh, sugar going to be out of hand. Sugar. Sugar is increasing rapidly, you are developing symptoms of polyuria, your ketones are becoming important in the home. That is one very important thing from the diabetic point. Second point of view, earlier the saturation is starting to come down. Your fever is becoming intractable. You are not responding to your normal simple dolo or glucosin, the fever is not coming down. And your cost is increasing. If you are increasing, you're not able to lie down, you're not able to breathe. And if you're doubling the blue discretion of your fingers and toes, that is very important. You should always contact the emergency and maybe report an emergency. So, someone with gestational diabetes is more prone to COVID-19. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that is the correct thing. As I said, the diabetic patients are not so prone to get the same as a kind of infection. But in case you are a gestational diabetic and you already have been on treatment and you get the COVID and the standard precautions apply, you'll have to be more careful about your sugar and more happy. Um, so, do the diabetic patients need to worry about the diabetic ketoacidosis? The DK is a possibility there. Again, as I said, there can be two situations on steroids, without the steroids. Type 1 diabetes can more likely to go into ketosis if you don't adjust your dose for the insulin. As I said, if you're doing stress, you will require more dose of insulin. Your dose has to be adjusted for that. If you have adjusted your dose and your sugar is in the range, 
then you don't know complication or don't know details about it. But if you're not interested at all, the sugars are going high, then the risk of ketosis is going down. In type 2 diabetes, sometimes we are using a drug called SGL inhibitors, very commonly used drug these days for the cardiovascular protection or the nephro protection. So that drug, if you're a lean diabetic and if you're uh, requiring a high amount of insulin requirement, you're on SGL inhibitors. So that drug, uh, sometimes you have to stop the patient getting sick. Normally, we say the patient is sick, stop the drug. That can drug can precipitate sometimes the euglycemic diabetic ketosis. So that means the sugar may not be high, but the still the ketone being formed in the body. How did the patient go on to steroid? I think the requirement of insulin goes very, very high. And if you do that not been tested properly to get the sugar under control, you may land up in the And the last condition that I probably prefer to see is sometimes very rarely the COVID infection as such can lead to decay. But a very simple test for ketones is there in the body. Can do in the home. The keto dash checks are available in the market. You can keep those checks in the home. If the sugars are more than 250, always check for the keto uh, ketones that check in the home is positive or negative. Sugar the high, ketones becoming positive, it's a sign that you have to report an emergency as soon as possible. Um, so, can the diabetic medications amplify my immune response to COVID 19? The, uh, the diabetic medication as such will not modify or magnify the COVID complications. But as I said, if suppose they're developing the hypoxemia, the body saturation are low, then we have to withdraw the pain. We have to withdraw the metformin. If you're a hypoxic and you're not doing the metformin, then you may give a lactic acid. So those contact medications have to be prepared. All the medications that are using for diabetes are not going to cause your COVID infection or increase the risk of COVID complications. But as depending upon the general condition, we have to alter the treatment. That's, a, that's also a non-COVID condition also. When patient comes to you for a they come to you as an emergency, comes to you in the ICU. We would draw certain cuts and put them on insulin. So whenever you are in stress, insulin is the best hormone to use. If you are at home, you are stable, you can use their old medication for that. But if you are not well, you are sick, insulin is the best choice. Um, so the virus may indirectly attack insulin production. Please comment. Again, okay. the question is coming back to that same thing again. Virus can basically affect the beta cell. But this is not a very commonly seen scenario. It can impact the beta cell, it can destroy the beta cell, destroy the autoimmunity, and you may land up with type 1 diabetes. But this is a, a type 1 type 1B autoimmune diabetes, but it's not a very common scenario. Right. So, are there any special considerations while caring for the elderly or children with diabetes? See, diabetes is a situation uh, in the children, basically, you have to be careful because. If there will be the motion, there will be type 1 diabetes, then they'll be on insulin multiple injection. Their food intake may go erratic. An elderly patient, you can always scold them or force them to eat. But a child sometimes says, I will not eat the food, I will not eat the food. The sick day rules will apply. Any mother or the child, they, they will know, they will know see, what the sick day rule of type 1 diabetes are. In case the patient is getting sick, he has fever, so we should check more frequently, check the ketones. And if the sugar is increasing, we should definitely use a correction dose to increase. That's very important. And very uh, the ch ch type 1 diabetes, the children may go on to a multisystemic inflammatory disorder. Again, it is not a very common disorder. In COVID, but that possibility is there. So to, to do be key protection of dietitian and follow up with them. And really, patients need to be careful because I said there can be two ways of diabetes. One side, the diabetes may go up. Sometimes the diabetes may go down on the because hypoglycemia also. If they have got worsening of the renal function, they have got worsening of the liver function, the intake is not appropriate, they may end up in hypoglycemia. So that monitoring becomes very, very important. So the elderly patient and at the age is one of the very important factors to cure is the COVID morbidity. That should be looked at. But then we have stories also. If they were diabetic, they have come out quite well. It's not that every elderly patient will have complications. Some do very well, some do not do very well. Um, so to talk about the relation between vaccine and uh, blood glucose, can the vaccine, COVID vaccine, increase blood glucose? You see, uh, uh, any kind of situation which causes a little bit of fever to come, if you look at the vaccines, some of the patients may develop fever, but they're not a very common gene scenario. But if they develop any fever or some other kind of flu like syndrome, the requirement of insulin may have to be adjusted, medication may have to be adjusted. But there will be a very short kind of uh, couple of days or three days, the fever may last. After that, they will come back to your normal condition. So do not delay your vaccination just for the fear of the fever. If I get fever, my sugar will go up, I should not take the vaccine. No. If you're a diabetic, you should go for the vaccination. If you have fever, 
managing like either fever that normally we manage in practice. So should a diabetic patient take any special precautions before and after COVID vaccination? You should make sure that your sugar is under, keep under control. So that is the important part. That's why, as for any other scenario, you should, you should, keep, you should keep your sugar under control as much as possible. Um, so one more question related to the same topic, doctor. Can diabetic patients use regular diabetic medication and the blood, uh, BP medication after taking vaccination? You should be on regular medication. You should not stop the medication just because you're going for a vaccination. Diabetic patients go for many vaccines. We put them on a pneumococcal vaccine, we put them on a hepatitis B vaccine. That is regular vaccination with influenza vaccine. And that should be like any other normal vaccination. They should take their medication on time. Um, so are there any foods that need to be avoided when the diabetic above 50 years of age is detected COVID positive? Food to be avoided? Food or food? Foods. Any food, any specific yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, we do allow one to one and a half two food exchange per day for a diabetic patient. That can be used. Now, normally, a one food exchange would mean half an apple, one orange, one guava. That can be safely. We normally don't advise patients to take food juices. That has to be avoided. But one food exchange to one and a half food exchange can be normally used in patients with diabetes, even without with COVID or without COVID. But don't have to take any food juices. Mango, they have to be very careful because quantity, but many many because there's a mango season as of now. If you're taking plenty of mango or mango juice, your sugar will go high and this will create problems. Any recommended foods that will help the diabetic patients? Uh, they know such kind of special fruit to be given for the COVID situation. Normally, the half an apple or an orange or a guava or a sweet lime, a cup of papaya or a cup of watermelon, they are very safe foods to be used. They can be used. How about the regular other um, food items, doctor? Any recommendations specifically? See, we normally say to limit the amount of carbohydrate, we should take adequate protein, adequate fats, and limit the amount of carbohydrate. The amount of fiber should be taken. More amount of fiber, more amount of vegetables. That's very important. Limit the uh, simple carbs, which are poor items, which got a lot of glycemic index, the sugar will jump up very high, and that may create problem. Take the food with more amount of fiber, which will limit your glycemic surge after the meal. Um, so we have a question from one of the users saying, uh, what medicines I have to take? I'm COVID positive, I'm hypertensive, and have autoimmune disorder. My age is 46. See, uh, if you have tested positive and if you have autoimmune disorder, you will be in a follow-up with the rheumatologist from before. I think you should contact them rather than kind of like an endocrinologist for autoimmune medicine. Normally, we say for thyroid problem, the medicine needs to may not be changed. Autoimmune problem of thyroid is there, type 1 diabetes is there. That the thyroid dose remains the same. The dose of insulin will be changed depending upon your sugar values. And for other uh, autoimmune disorders, you should consult your immunology doctor or immunologist to adjust it. Okay. Um, so slightly stepping back to the vaccine question again. Um, are both vaccines, Covishield versus Covaxin, equally effective for diabetic patients or one is more effective than the other? As of now, I don't think I really kind of, we have separate data for diabetic patients. It is the same to be equally, equally effective for both the patients. So both the vaccines are found to be equally effective. I think you can take any one of them which is available. Uh, the next question is, if a diabetic is asked to take steroid injection for any treatment, should he or she consult a doctor before going for that treatment? You know, it will depend upon how rapid the situation is worsening for you. Now, in case you have time, to start, you are stable and they're starting is a sugar just by a pulmonary condition. You, are to you can always consult your regular doctor and get in touch with them. If not, in case phase, you can go on online consultation. If not, your doctor, some other doctor to adjust your medication. And in case it's an emergency, you're in the hospital, the doctor will take care of you and they'll adjust your medication. If you're in the home, you've been advised to write. So do take the steroid injection and always get in touch with the doctor as soon as possible. As I said, keep one doctor not available on the online consultation. You can always consult other doctor to get the medicine to adjust. Practically, you will want to insulin, and it will not differ whether you want to A insulin or B insulin, C insulin. You have to take insulin to go and start that insulin and get the sugar in the country. Um, so, can a diabetic COVID patient take Fabi Flu 400? You can take Fabi Flu as required. The role of Fabi Flu, as of now, the COVID infection is very, very limited. But still, if a doctor is it to you, you can take it. So what are the precautions a diabetic COVID patient should take at home? See, uh, the first thing is start checking your sugar. That's very 
have a glucometer, have a PV measuring machine instrument, and you have a concentration meter. And maybe make a chart of your symptoms. The fever is lasting for how many hours or how much time, how much requirement of antipyretic medicine you have to have, and make a check your sugar regularly. The simple of, uh, pattern of taking the sugar in daily is the fasting sugar before lunch, before dinner, and bedtime. This is a normal routine patient you should follow. Check your sugar daily four times in a day, check your blood pressure twice in a day, check your saturation, plus check two or six minute walk test. Make a chart of that. And your CS are coming out less than 90%. You're developing heart rate is going higher. Your fever is not coming down. That's an alarming sign. Um, so just to conclude, doctor, what is the special advice that you give to the people with diabetes during this pandemic? First and most important thing is do not get the infection. If you are at home, you stay at home, go out only for a very urgent purpose. If you're going out, wear a mask, if you're staying at home also, wear a mask and always keep washing your hand. You have to go out, maintain a social distance and come back home as soon as possible. Second thing is get your sugars in order and control. See that you're under properly, you have a proper amount of medicine in the home. If your lockdown comes, you should have adequate supply, you should have adequate supply of chips and keep checking your sugars and see if they're under control. In case you get the infection, don't panic. There is all the platform of online consultation is there. You can have an online platform and then consult and take the message accordingly. Um, so this concludes our um, effect question, the question answer session, doctor. Thank you for a very informative session. Given how prevalent diabetes is in India, um, this has been very useful information of how the public can, um, you know, go about taking care of themselves. Uh, you know, if they are turned out to be positive or while they are home, how can they care for themselves? Thank you so much for that. Um, so do watch us out for uh, next session tomorrow. At the same time, the topic is managing COVID-19 infection at home by Dr. Mahesh Joshi, CEO Apollo Home Care. Um, if you have any more queries, please do feel free to reach us out through Facebook Messenger or you can post your comments in the comment section. Until then, take care, be safe, and don't forget to SMS as for social distancing. M mask is always on as for sanitization. Thank you and namaste. Thank you.